Hello, my name is India Weber, and this is my interview for Diana Dorville. Hello, and welcome back to the Diana Dorville podcast. Today, I've had the immense pleasure to have radiant India Weber for a little conversation in her Parisian home. TV host on Paris Première, mother of a little angel and model, India also runs her blog, where she shares all her tips and secret traveling gems on indiainsights.com, a real Bible of all things art de vivre with India's secret sauce. In this episode, India speaks about her relationship to sustainability, her modeling career, to crucial subjects such as her ideal dinner reception. I hope you will enjoy it as much as I did. Bonne écoute. <laughs> Alors, a bustling life as a model, TV host on Paris Première, and a mother. Can you briefly walk us through your story? So my story, wow, well, it's, it's a long story, but uh, I'm born and raised in Paris. My mom is American from Texas and my father is French. Uh, so I was born and raised here with a multicultural uh, environment since I went to an American school. Uh, I also lived in the United States. I lived in New York where I was modeling <laughs> for a few years. And uh, yeah, I very quickly saw that school was not for me and my parents were like, okay, you don't want to do school then you're going to have to work. So yeah, I decided to do modeling. And uh, after a few years of modeling, I wasn't the typical, let's say, model girl. I mean, I love to eat, so I wasn't very good with the whole weight <laughs> business. Uh, but I mean, it was great uh, being able to travel and move around, meeting so many people. And I've always loved uh, taking pictures. So I was taking pictures of the place I was going, doing interviews even of uh, the other models, the photographers. And at one point I was like, well, I should uh, start sharing this and the blogging was starting. There wasn't a lot of uh, people blogging and so that's how I started my, my blog. So I started writing the stories and, and putting them down and people loved it. And uh, after that, uh, how did it start? Then after that, <laughs> yeah, it started really picking up, uh, especially in Paris because I mean, as you know, the French people are usually a little late on things. So uh, <laughs> there weren't a lot of girls doing that. And, uh, and after I did one casting for Paris Première, and it was nice because it was something about culture and it was good to get out of the whole, you know, the modeling and the mud and I don't know, talking about cultural things. It felt like, you know, very intelligent and very interesting. So, more intellectual. So, more intellectual. <laughs> so I thought that was perfect for me. And the first casting went so poorly. It was horrible. And they told me, sorry, it is not going to work out. And weirdly, they called me back one month later and they said, you know what? We, we think you should do the casting again. And so I did the casting. It went really well this time. Uh, and I started working on Paris Première. So that's the story. <laughs> How do you stay on top of your game? How do I stay on top of my game? Wow. Um, well, I've been looking a lot about meditation. I mean, people say that it takes a lot of time to really know how to meditate. So sometimes like I, I'll work on my the way I, I, I breathe and I'm gonna listen to all these podcasts and try to really meditate. I feel very stupid because I feel like it's not really working on me, <laughs> but I really do believe that at one point I will, you know, get it and that it's, it's, it's going to work out. I, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> so COVID undeniably forced the fashion, luxury and cultural industries to reinvent themselves. Um, what is your vision on their future? Um, I would say my vision on the future Well, first, starting about the present, I'm bluffed by everything that's been done by the luxury brands and the way they managed to reorganize to be able to do these amazing shows that we still love looking at through the internet. Um, I think also, I mean, we went through horror with this whole pandemic thing, but I think everybody now is thinking of a better way to 
to live and uh, I don't know if I'm gonna explain this right, but even the, the luxury brands, I think really need to work on the way they do even their collections. And I find like there's so many collections per year and I was heard that Armani is gonna do um, less uh, collections and he's, he's gonna leave the collections for a while in his boutiques, which I think is interesting because we're all thinking, okay, we need, we need to get this uh, very quickly, the first collection, everything, every time something comes out, we're like, we need to get it. And I'm not into that anymore. Like, that's really not my thing. And I, I think even the brands, even though they are always gonna find the thing that we're gonna want for the summer, I think they're looking into finding things that we're gonna want to wear in a few years. Some things that aren't gonna be demodable. Mm. Voilà. Long lasting, yeah, uh, like exactly. to last, to pass on to the next generation. <laughs> so what is your relationship to sustainability? Does it influence your choices, whether you buy um, uh, food, uh, luxury fashion item, home cleaning products, or it's stuff for your, your child? Uh, absolutely, and even more since I have my child, because, you know, when they grow up, it's like you need to change their clothes every two months, every three months, and it's it's absolutely crazy. So I was like, okay, so I need to buy things, like even he's gonna be able to wear them for a year or things like that, or even for myself, um, I used to say, wanna buy the last little thing, and you know, and I would wear it once or twice, and then I was like, ugh, I'm already tired of it. So. I know that I'm still going to invest in like one beautiful piece that I know I'm going to be wearing for like years, uh, a good leather jacket, a nice jean, uh, things you know that aren't going to be, I, I won't be tired of. And um, for the rest, uh, I also do a lot of uh, free prix and things like that. Or even I have so many pairs of jeans and now I love to customize them and I feel like I'm having a new jean, like I'm going to take like a bandanas and do some patchworks or uh, take some old buttons from another coat that's that I'm not going to use and put it on and um, I had so many last year actually during the confinement I had so many t-shirts that were you know become a little yellow and I started doing the tie-dye t-shirts and um, I gave mm -hmm. them a new you know new life and mm -hmm. uh, and that was great so that's one thing and for whatever's food, um, I mean, I still think I can do better, definitely. I used to do, before confinement, a lot of Deliveroo. Like that was, I would, I would be tired and just want to order and do nothing. And I figured out today that, you know, buying good products and, you know, be care being careful with what you buy. And same thing, I would go to whatever place and buy so much and at the end I would throw so much stuff and now I really try to you know I'm gonna as soon as I buy I'm gonna cook them put them in the congelo and so I know that I'm not wasting and I'll be even able to eat it in a month and so yeah a lot of things has changed and but I'm sure I can do better that's for sure <laughs> so as a model mm. what is your secret to looking so fresh any self-care routine um, well, it's funny because my self-care routine is, well, no, it's not funny because I am getting older, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would say that I do so much more today than I used to before. Um, but I was lucky enough to have a mother who herself, she was a model, so very young. She was always take, telling me, be careful with your skin, use protection. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. You need to do it. Uh, obviously a lot of sports so I do uh, I have a class of uh, box I do three times yeah three times a week and before I used to do a lot of ballet so hopefully after everything's opens and opens again I'll, I'll be able to dance again but for the moment a lot of box and that has changed definitely my body so, uh, first three words when you think of Diana Dorville. Ooh la la, only three? <laughs> oh, um, can I <laughs> uh, No, I would say effortless. Um, something simple, but that you can wear day and night. It should be the same piece as what I'm wearing today. It's like, you can just dress it up and dress it down. And you look ravishing. Yes, thank you so much. So, only three words, it's, it's difficult, but intemporel. <laughs> 
euh, modern and euh, voilà dans le temps quoi. <laughs> what did you dream of as a little girl and what would you tell her today? Um, I would tell her that it is not at all what's going to happen of what she dreamt of what she what she was dreaming when she was a little girl. A girl. Uh, I guess I, younger I had so many dreams. I but that had nothing to do with what I'm doing today. Uh, I wanted to work with, uh, uh, I was passionate by Commandant Cousteau. Like uh, I wanted to be on the by the sea. I wanted to be, uh, you know, so nothing to do with. So I would, I would tell her, um, it's not always gonna be easy. Your dreams may not come true, but you're gonna be lucky and you're gonna have a lot of wonderful things, so. Good. <laughs> So you host a dinner, mm -hmm. who do you invite? Yes. What's on the menu and uh, what do you wear? Ooh, so if I host a dinner, I want something very fun and light. So I will clearly not invite anybody from the politics or from uh, way past. Pas de politique, pas de religion, just have fun. So I would definitely, <laughs> <laughs> I would invite Freddie Mercury. Oh, I would oui. invite Prince. <laughs> I would ask him if it was possible to sing together. I would do my own podcast and I would put it on the, and it become viral. <laughs> <laughs> Probably something like that. And maybe Michael Jackson also. Oh yes. Yeah, definitely. Good idea. I, had a, I would have a few questions. For Bonne him ambiance, hein, dedans. Ouais. Ouais. Sing le dîner. Laugh. <laughs> um, what would be on the menu and what would you wear? Hmm. Uh, what would be on the menu? Uh, well, if I had to do something for myself, I would do my wonderful poulet au citron uh, from a recipe that I stole from Otto uh, But I hope they eat meat because with everything, everybody with their problems and allergies and going vegan, or maybe I would do something more simple to be sure that nobody has a problem and everybody can eat something. It's quite hard, huh? Yeah, it's very difficult <laughs> organizing dinner now. <laughs> <laughs> and what would I wear? Yes. I could absolutely wear this and I would probably put a pair of wonderful earrings and um, what else? Yeah, that's all. Or maybe a bit of jewelry to dress it up, but I would go exactly like this. Something comfortable and nice. Merci. Uh, your favorite book, film uh, and music? Um, favorite book, actually, it's been the same for since I don't know how long, and I've just started it, reading it again because I'm reading it to my son, which is Le Petit Prince de Saint Exupéry. Uh, best one. There's so many, and every time I read it, I, I understand something that I didn't understand when I was little. So it's just re rediscovering this book over and over. So that would be the book I'm reading right now and the, my favorite book in the world. <laughs> uh, uh, my, I would recommend watching on Netflix, uh, Le Serpent, which is ah oui. incroyable. Really, I forgot the name of the actor and he won so many. Ta, Ta Raim. Ta Raim, <laughs> who is amazing. And I'm not even going to say about it. It's just the true story and... It's amazing and he's incredible. So it's 10 episodes, one hour, and I watched it like in three days. <laughs> and favorite music? Hmm. Uh, J'ai oublié le nom du mec. <laughs> J'ai oublié le nom du mec. Alors, je, on ne va pas faire le coup de la musique. Je vais t'expliquer pourquoi. Parce que mon mec est dans la musique. Et si je ne parle pas de ses chansons, il va mal le prendre. On ne parle pas de musique là. Voilà, on parle pas de <laughs> Any safe heaven or dream destination? Um, I have my safe place, but what's weird is that this safe place I haven't been in years. Um, my dad used to have an amazing house in the Bermudas, and it was like this incredible white house in front of like the, you had the whole sea in front of you. It was just incredible. And what's funny is that I've started doing these uh, hypno it knows but little ones and every time I go see her she's like she's the one who helped me stop smoking she's she helped me with a lot of things 
anxiety or things when I'm not feeling comfortable. And every time she starts by saying, okay, go to your place where you feel good and nice. And every time I think at that beautiful house and me with this beautiful view and I just, that's my safe place. Even though I haven't been for years, it's the place I want to go to all the time. C'est magnifique. Thank you, India. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening and on to the next episode. India is wearing our Sin Silk Palazzo that you can find exclusively on dianadorville.com. Ciao, ciao. A bientôt.